Claim suppression occurs when an employer instructs a worker to not report an injury or illness or to underreport its severity or the amount of lost time associated with it. As of January 1st of this year, a series of compliance provisions came into effect under Ontario's Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. Laura Russell and Julie Weller from Matthews, Dinsdale & Clark tell us more. Workplace Safety Insurance Act was uh, modified to add uh, what we call Section 22.1 just over two years ago actually. So claim suppression has been defined in the legislation and has been uh, one of the types of compliance issues that the WSIB is monitoring and can prosecute on. They last year uh, developed uh, a two-pronged approach um, that isn't just prosecution concept. Um, it's actually to do with an audit process and some administrative um, fines. Um, and the fines only come into effect January 1st, 2018. Claim suppression, although it is directed at employers and that it is an offense that with an employer's intent to suppress claims, there's also the aspect of unions coming to agreements with the employers or a worker coming to an agreement with the employer that could result in the appearance of claim suppression. And so it's important for all workplace parties to sort of understand the landscape of claim suppression so that when they're interacting with each other with regards to grievances, forming collective agreements, uh, or you know terminations, to make sure that there are no steps taken that might result in the appearance of or the actual suppression of claims. The administrative penalty program is, so there's branches of the WSAB that's kind of monitoring and enforcing claim suppression. The WSIB has sort of a data analytics or a matrix system set up to uh, look at employer behavior and see whether or not that employer is high risk based on a number of factors. And if through data analysis and data collection it seems like the employer is high risk because they might have checked off um, a series of boxes like, for example, not reporting on time or claims being initiated not by a Form 7 but by uh, a Form 6 or a Form 8, so an employee report or a worker reporting or a doctor reporting, um, you know, other, other sort of factors like that, then the WSIB might pursue that employer and conduct an audit to see whether or not claim suppression is occurring. Make sure that there is a reporting expectation, that employers are clear with their workers and with the help of their unions if they are unionized to have a clear communication that reporting of uh, injuries and illnesses, even if you're not 100% sure, but if you think there's a work connection, um, that there's an expectation so people feel free to be able to report. For more health and safety videos, make sure to subscribe to our Canadian Occupational Safety YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest health and safety updates. For Canadian Occupational Safety, I'm Amanda Silliker.